So the creativity of the preacher must always be guarded. And it doesn't matter what you do, you have to take some time to study. Amen. Amen. Study. You have to study until it becomes a part of your life. It's like working out. You have to keep working out until if you don't work out, you feel guilty. The worst feeling that any preacher can have is for Saturday night, midnight, and you don't know what you're talking about in the morning. So study, that now, now I get, study. There's, there's, no, there's, there's, there's no substitute for it. Uh, uh, they used to say, just open your mouth and the Lord will fill it. Fill it with air. <laughs> what we've got to no. learn to do is, that we have to learn to do is, we have to establish some tension. Not contradictory, but ambiguity. Why is... Jesus so close to these people, but he wouldn't rush. You would think that since John is establishing so succinctly and so clearly, so explicitly that they are close, that if Jesus should have gone to anybody's house in a hurry when he heard he was sick, surely now should have been to Lazarus. So right away now, your audience is beginning to wonder what's really going on here. So it starts like this. Uh-uh. <laughs> As you continue, you will understand that the underlining point here is that Jesus is about to reveal himself to his friends because he reveals himself to people he's close to, not to people who are far from him. Mm -hmm. It's in relationship that you have revelation. So now, he is about to put his friends in a whole lot of trouble so he can reveal himself to them in a unique way. That's the whole line. That's the undergird of the whole story. And that is that Jesus is going to show them he's a resurrection and the life. So he, life, so he wants Lazarus to die. See, now, now, now you've got the tension. Lazarus is dead. And the next verse says, and I am glad. <laughs> now we have tension because here is the master stopping when Lazarus is dying. And so now when that point is made, the uh -uh becomes, hmm. You do not change minds arguing philosophy. I, I, I will point out to you right now that if you spend your time arguing your philosophical position from a Christian point of view, you're going to isolate a whole lot of folk. Because a whole lot of folk don't care about your philosophical point of view as it relates to your denomination. All right, let me talk to you now. Let me talk to you, and, and I'm rambling a little bit, then I'll go and put some structure to it. See, there's a great shift in Christianity today. We have actually become more ecumenical. We preach cross-denominationally. We are now preaching across denominational lines. I grew up as an apostolic Pentecostal, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, and you can't get no closed, more closed than that. <laughs> I'm talking about shut door closed. A pantyhose was a sin where I came from.
you couldn't listen to anybody who was not baptized in Jesus name speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance and living holy every day notice if you will to get up every day and argue which baptism is right is going to cause your church